This camera is so early and so primitive that it's not easy to recognize it as a professional 35mm motion picture camera. Essentially, it's just gears in three wooden boxes and some pieces of glass on the front of one of them. Actually, this was the top of the line professional motion picture camera of its day. It's baffling how they managed to do this in 1899. This camera was made by John Alfred Prestwich. He was one of the very first manufacturers of movie cameras. He lived and worked at 744 High Road from 1888 to 1900. The address tag on this camera dates it at early 1900 or before. There weren't but a few professional movie cameras made before 1900. There can't be more than a couple handfuls that have survived 115 years. Almost all of those are locked up in museums or extremely powerful collections. In the late 1890s, the newest discovery for the movie Genesis people was that they were able to create photographs that moved. It wasn't even cinema. It was animated pictures. Animated pictures were just a novelty form of still pictures. That's all there was. The history of the early animated film business, now remember, they weren't called movies yet. The history is divided between romantic thoughts of the beginnings and the actual business-driven practicality. It was crazy fun to make moving pictures, but it was outrageously expensive. Helping to drive the idea of creativity was the need to make a profit. Being able to make money meant that you could roll the profits back into the making of more animated pictures. As far as a business model was concerned, the Genesis generation saw that people paid money just to take a look at something that you had made. They would enter your building, pay to see that something, and then leave. It was an astounding, unprecedented business. You sold something that you made, and yet when the customer left your building, you still had the item to sell to the next customer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Now, I've had about 300 cameras and never had a camera this old. I can't tell you how rare this camera really is. There aren't but a mere handful of cameras older than this one. It's from before the turn of the last century. Now this is one of the first cameras to have detachable film magazines, thus eliminating the, the, uh, the need to take the whole camera to the dark room to change the film. I've only ever actually touched two of these, but I've seen pictures of about seven of them. Press switch cameras from this period were so early in the development of movie cameras that I've never seen two that were just alike. The development of cameras at the time must have been so fluid that there were new innovations every month if not every week. This model press switch was the first camera ever to introduce quick change lenses. This camera is from the beginning of the beginning. In 1899, no one thought of film entertainment in the scale that it would become in just 10 years. This camera really is the moving image version of a Gutenberg printing press. This is how you load film into a press switch 35mm motion picture studio camera from about 1899. First, you put your raw stock in the magazine and pull off enough so that you can get it around this roller here at the top and then feed down through this felt lined light trap on the side of the magazine and feed extra film 
so that it goes all the way through the magazine and out the bottom. You open the uh, door locks on the uh, mechanism side of the camera, expose the mechanism, pull your mag lock out, and then you put this lug here so that it fits down through the hole in the uh, camera body. Thread your film down through the uh, film hole opening. Put that in place and lock the mag. Then you put a little extra film in here and open the keeper roller lock and load the film so that the sprocket holes and the sprocket teeth all get uh, together properly. Advance the uh, camera just a little bit. There we go. Then you open the uh, pressure plate Run your film over the top of the pressure plate. Now, I've only done this a couple of times, so <laughs> let's see how awkward I can make this look. Let's see. And you run the film down through here behind where the pull-down claws go. And then advance the film. Comes out the bottom. Open this lock, release those rollers, and thread the film on the bottom of the sprocket drum. Now you want to make sure and that your bottom loop doesn't allow the film to drag on the bottom of the camera and put the keeper rollers in place and lock them and then test it. Well, it's a little too tight. We're going to back off a couple sprocket holes and put the lock back in place again. There we go. And that's a good thread. Take your film, run it up here and feed film so that it goes into the take-up magazine. Once you have the camera threaded properly, then you feed enough film through the uh, take-up mag to travel all the length of this uh, felt-lined light trap slot and get a little tab here so that you can get the end of it and crank the camera enough to get the film onto the take-up film core. Once you have that, you crank the camera some more, making sure that your film is trapped up against the core. And now you're ready to shoot. Please feel free to contact me with any questions about this camera or any other camera through my website, samdodge.com.